Good morning everyone, today we're going to be talking about the best place to farm for Dreadkeeper 5s because a ton of people have been asking me, Caro, I'm willing to put in the time to farm for Dual Quest. However, the problem that I'm having now is not the Fusia capsules, but is the Dreadkeeper 5s in order to craft Grand Dreadkeeper 1 to upgrade into Grand Dreadkeeper 2. So where do we even farm for these? Well, in today's video, we're going to be covering all of that. But before we jump into the rest of the video, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. Alright, so I'm just going to cut to the chase and give you guys the answer right at the beginning of the video. You have two choices. The first one is Raw Makid over here. Simply because there are two veterans, there's one around here and there's another around down here. And you're basically just going to rotate between the two veterans. You can kill the Recon Gigantics if you want. However, do not bother with Halvadi. Now, you can kill Havadi, and Havadi does have a chance of dropping Dreadkeeper 5. However, the time that is required to take out Havadi, especially when you have a small party, is incredibly wasteful. So if you're just going for Dreadkeeper 5s, just rotate between the two veterans in Ra Makid, and you're good to go. So that is option number one. The second option is Rayor Gorge. Now, personally, I prefer Rayor Gorge for several reasons. The first reason is because all of the veterans in Rayor Gorge are higher level than in Raw Makid. Now they're both above the threshold to drop Dreadkeeper 5, so regardless of which area you go to farm, you will be able to get Dreadkeeper 5s. But personally, I believe that the higher level veterans have a higher chance of dropping Dreadkeeper 5s versus the lower level ones. Now, I don't actually have any statistics to show you this. However, just from my rough experience from playing like three hours every day on stream, you know, Rayor Gorge has treated me better with the Dreadkeeper 5 drops versus Raw Makid. But then again, I've also farmed a lot more in the Gorge versus Makid. Now, the second reason on why I prefer Rayor Gorge over Makid is because Rayor Gorge is a flat plane. There is no crazy elevation like in Raw Makid, where you constantly have to platform around, you need to take the little lifters, you need to take the bouncy pads and all of that stuff to move around. With Rayor Gorge, it's a flat piece of land, there's just a bunch of different mobs that spawn around. There is uh, one veteran over here that is the Vansher. There's another veteran over here, which is the Raylin. And you literally just kill both of them over and over and over. However, while you're bouncing between these two veterans, there's a bunch of Recon Gigantics that spawn in the middle. They can spawn up here as well. And then, of course, you also have the Ancient. And on top of that, the Ancient actually does not take forever to kill, unlike Halvadi. Halvadi actually takes everyone like 10 to 15 minutes to kill. Versus the Ancient, which literally took us like five minutes to kill. So personally, I prefer Rayor Gorge simply because there's a lot more stuff to do. While you're waiting for the veterans to respawn, there are Recon Gigantics, there is the Ancients, there are Trials. There's a bunch of different teams that you can kill in order to get Crisp Kavaris meat. So personally, Rayor Gorge is my favorite place to farm for. The only thing you need to pay attention to is Rayor Gorge does have that harsh environment thing. So if you're not lighting the torches all the time in order to get the damage buff, which is actually really big, by the way. I highly recommend that you take full advantage of those torches, lighting them and just running into the circle will give you this fiery aura around you. And that gives you a damage buff so you can deal extra damage and kill things really, really quickly and really efficiently. So that, I guess that's like the third reason on why I like Rear Gorge. But nevertheless, Rear Gorge is where I prefer to farm because it's just easier to navigate. It's easier to gather everyone, but there is the harsh environment damage. So if you don't have these low temperature damage resistance, 20, 50 or 100 percent, it might be a little bit tricky there, especially if you do miss out on one or two of those lanterns. But but personally, I think it shouldn't be too difficult because, you know, everyone's usually lighting up those lanterns to give you that damage buff anyway. So just make sure that you do run into those orange circles or those red circles so that you are immune to the low temperature damage. However, if you're like me and you're incredibly lazy and you're just like, man, I just don't want to take any damage at all. You know, popping a 100% low temperature damage resistance will give you immunity to that cold damage for an entire hour. And you can still pick up the fire buff and still get that damage buff along the way. Now, as for the advantages of Raw Makid, which is right behind me, as you can see that giant mushroom rock looking thing, that's literally Raw Makid. Um, the main advantage of Raw Makid is if you're a streamer or if you're 
like in a group chat with a bunch of friends. Ramakit is actually really chill as well in the sense that you just bounce between the two veterans. If you just do that and you ignore the Recon Gigantics, you ignore Halvadi, it is extremely chill. We did a three hour farming session at Ramakit yesterday and it was incredibly chill because we were just bouncing between the two. There is a lot of downtime as you're waiting for the veterans to spawn. However, again, that wasn't really the main focus of what my intention was when I was farming it, because I was really just talking to chat most of the time, and we were just talking about like PC parts and stuff that I wanna do in Malaysia and stuff while we were farming. So it didn't feel as bad. However, if you're hyper-focused on just farming, 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 and being efficient with your time, I can't really recommend Raw Makid. However, something that is really nice about Raw Makid is, of course, all the mob levels are slightly lower, so it is a lot easier to kill them incredibly quickly. So, you know, since we're level 90, and if you do have decent gear like an Iridium weapon, as well as some Ecstasis armors, or even just the regular Aina armors, you'll be able to tear through the mobs really, really quickly, it, with the exception of Halvadi. Halvadi is still stupidly tanky, so personally, I think he's not worth it. But for the veterans, even the recon gigantics are super, super easy to kill in uh, Raw Makid because of the level difference. So at the end of the day, where should you farm? It depends on your play style. If you are busy doing something else while farming, Raw Makid is great. You know, maybe you're watching a YouTube video, maybe you're watching some Netflix, some anime at the side and you're farming raw Makita at the same time, and you just want something, you know, you want to farm, but that's not really like your main focus. You're just kind of like turning off your brain and just like side focusing on farming, then raw Makita is great. However, if you want to be fully invested into the game and like, you know, combat and actually playing the game is your main focus, then I would recommend the Gorge. Personally, as I said earlier, I like the Gorge more because there's more things to kill, there's more things to do, and uh, it's just easier to just lose yourself in the game because, you know, you're just constantly going from point A to B to C to D and it's like kill, 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 kill. And by the time you kill everything, oh, you know, something else respawn and you go kill that. So you're constantly moving around and killing stuff versus Raw Makid, it's like point A and point B, you're just rotating between those two points and you're sitting around waiting for it to respawn. So again, if you have like a YouTube video or Netflix or something running in the background and you're watching that while you're waiting for something to respawn, then Raw Makid is super comfortable and super chill so it's really up to you on how you guys play and how you guys want to farm now i'm sure a lot of you guys actually want to know the results of like okay how efficient is this how many dreadkeeper fives can i expect per hour uh, well these 18 dreadkeeper fives was obtained in the span of six hours or two live streams so three hours was spent in the gorge and another three hours was spent in raw Makid. So that roughly evens out to about three Dreadkeeper 5s every hour. However, you are at the mercy of RNG. Now, we had other people that were farming with me on stream and they were getting a ton of drops, but they did pop some rare drop boosters. So rare drop rate does affect the drop rate for these uh, Dreadkeeper 5s. However, depending on how you see rare drop rate, you know, it might be worth it, it might not be worth it. Personally, whenever I popped extra rare drop rate, it seemed to buff the drop rate for everyone around me and kind of just curse me. And so sometimes I don't pop it and then I get blessed. But uh, nevertheless, throughout these six hours, I did pop a 100% booster. So I was running around with about 130% rare drop rate. And uh, yeah, I was getting like three an hour on average. Okay. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.